Just make a choice, stick with it, don't change it. All we had to do was just stick with the plan. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel where we get out of our comfort zones by watching videos you normally wouldn't watch. Alright, let's get into a theory about a movie I haven't seen. <laughs> this should be fun. August 23rd. Be careful what you wish for, Parker. Hello, Peter. All right, anyone see anything new this time? There's a black cat on the wall at 56 seconds. Could be a Felicia Hardy clue. I wonder if that's actually how Matt Pat comes up with his theories. Him and his team just stay up all night watching movies. Be a Felicia Hardy clue, you know, the black cat. I think we noticed that around past number 246. Then no. Maybe we do another round at 0.75% speed. You ever wonder whether we're starting to miss the forest for the trees on these things? You mean apart from being in a video production bunker all day and thus seeing neither forests nor trees? They no, 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 I, I mean like, night. sure, there are Easter eggs in the trailers that get paid off later, but I mean, really? How deep does the rabbit hole truly go? I mean, how much of this is real? Are they really thinking this hard, planning all this out, or is it just us speculating, grasping at straws, just looking for the next little detail that we can desperately cling to in order to claim another 15? He's like giving off this vibe that he's just gone crazy for Easter eggs in these trailers. I mean, Spider-Man is Marvel, so I wouldn't put it past him to put in something into the Spider-Man trailers to claim another 15 minutes of relevance. Are we just wasting our lives watching the Spider-Man trailer 300 times to pick apart every last detail? What's today's date again? August 23rd? Why? internet welcome to film theory the show that knows you'll always find your way home to our like and subscribe button speaking of likes holy cow did people like that spider-man no way home trailer in 24 hours the thing amassed a total of 355 million views annihilating the previous record holder avengers endgame with its mere 298 million and it's not hard to see why a new spider-man sequel is in a pedigree by itself it's not a prequel about a character who's already died it's not an origin story for a character character no one's ever heard of. It's not whatever Eternals is trying to be, which gotta be honest, they're at the final trailer stage and I still don't see any semblance of a story there. None of those things. Instead, it's the payoff to one of cinema's greatest, most recent cliffhanger starring the most beloved Marvel superhero of all time. Is Spider-Man the most beloved hero? He's my least favorite superhero. Am I in the minority in this opinion? Alone has got to get people more excited than Tim Burton in a spirit Halloween store. Then add to that a potential multiversal crossover with resurrected pre-Disney villains and classic Spider-Man, and yeah, you got something that's gonna make Thanos' numbers look like chump change. You know that if Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield are actually in this thing, one moment of them doing the Spider-Man point at each other and the internet will melt. Literally just pull up and melt on the floor. Oh, and here's the other thing everyone in the blogosphere is forgetting. Into the Spider-Verse. Yeah, that's also a Sony property. Spoiler alert, there's absolutely a 100% chance that Miles Morales and a Spider-Verse reference will appear in this movie. What I'm really hoping for here is that there's that a happened. fully animated segment within this film, but either way, you don't just waste this chance to promote your other massive Spider-Man property about multiversal crossovers within this movie about Spider-Man and multiversal crossovers. Anyway, now that we've all seen it, or I guess I shouldn't say all, but again, 355 million people in 24 hours is about as close to all as we get in terms of unifying experiences. Outside, of course, like, the planet exploding or... I don't know, the McRib coming back. A lot of us have also noticed that something feels kind of off about what's actually happening within this trailer. Like, why would a fugitive Peter Parker wanted for murder actually go back to his high school? Why is it snowing indoors? Why is Dr. Confession. The only Spider-Man movie I have seen is the first one. Something about it just does not interest me at all. I don't know.
lying to Wong about a dangerous spell. And when did Flash Thompson get that dye job? It's not so much that the apparent sequence of events don't make sense, it's that the actions of the people making them don't seem to align with how we necessarily expect them to act. Something is going on here, and there are already a ton of interesting theories circulating. Is Doctor Ooh. Strange being manipulated? Is he a variant from another universe? Is this some kind of it's a wonderful life fake wish fulfillment dream scenario to teach Peter a lesson? Yeah. If you've seen It's a Wonderful Life, you're my type of people. Dream scenario to teach Peter a lesson about why he's wrong to turn to magic to solve his problems? Or is this the evil Doctor Strange from episode 4 of What If, who is also secretly Mephisto? And the thing is, I like all these theories. I think all of them are actually hitting pretty close to the truth. And we'll talk about them all here in a minute, but I've also got a theory that looks just a little bit further. My spider sense tells me No Way Home isn't just a huge Spider-Man sequel, it's also setting up yet another Spider-Man reboot. No. Okay, so for this theory to make any sense, we first need to talk about the essence of movie trailers. I mean, do you even know why they're called trailers? They're shown in front of movies after all, so what's the deal? Well, obviously the whole business of advertising movies has changed a lot over the years. Back in the really early pre-television days when going to the movies was an all-day event, studios would show two of their movies in a row back-to-back -back with the lower budget, less well-known one going first. This was the origin of the term B-movie. Bees have never <laughs> been afraid to change the world. I mean, what so about cute. B. Columbus? B. Gandhi? But Jesus, it's time to stop. Previews of coming attractions then came after this B reel, aka they were trailing the preceding show, hence the term trailers. But their goal has and will always be selling the audience on the next big upcoming movie. And the one technique that's proven more effective than any other is building a sense of mystery. No joke, we think of this as except trailers nowadays. If you've scrolled past Netflix, Disney Plus, all the trailers they give us nowadays are just the whole entire movie cut down to just a few minutes. Have you noticed that? That is why I just skip them. Just don't watch them, just dive into the movie like a cold swimming pool recent trend, but check out this old trailer from the movie Psycho, where the director Alfred Hitchcock just walks you around the set and makes everything into a cliffhanger. A quiet little motel, perfectly harmless looking, when in fact it has now become the scene of the crime. Oh, by the way, this picture People has great significance because... Mystery. Uh... It goes on like this for six minutes. Nowadays, things are a little bit fancier than this, with digital editing allowing studios to fake entire scenes just to get that trailer narrative that they want. In the trailers for Infinity War, they created a team shot with the Hulk that was never in the movie. They changed the number of the stones in the Infinity Gauntlet so people wouldn't know which order the scenes took place in. I mean, sure, this oh, fight on the train from the smart. No Way Home trailer okay. looks like Spidey's fighting Doctor Strange, but did not know they did that. It makes sense now they would do that, change the details that they show in the trailer. Doctor Strange, but maybe they're both fighting someone who hasn't been added to the finished FX yet. Heck, is that even Doctor Strange? Mordo is still at large. He dresses pretty much like Strange does, so it wouldn't be that tough of an edit to deep fake out. Someone. Same thing with this woman who awkwardly looks pasted in there and doesn't move. It could be some Spidey Sense slowdown effect, or maybe this is just a stand-in pasted in over someone who might have been an actual spoiler. The point is, well, yeah, Doctor Strange agreeing to cast a super risky spell for an impulsive teenager and then getting mad at him when he continues to be impulsive about it really seems like it should want more context. In reality, we don't have any context for any of this. It just feels like we do because the trailer's editing did a great job using a story structure to sell a micro-narrative about the general premise, or as much of the premise as they want us to be aware of right now. <laughs> I can spaces. practically guarantee you that Doctor Strange's line about the dangers of messing with the multiverse comes from probably the final minutes of the movie. What we do know is that Peter's secret identity was revealed at the end of Far From Home. It's messing up his life and the lives of his loved ones, and so he's asking Doctor Strange to mind wipe the planet. And if you know your Spider-Man comics, well, that premise is gonna make you sit bolt upright. Pretty much the exact plot of one of the most controversial Spider-Man story arcs of all time, One More Day. This one has gotten talked about a lot, so I'm not gonna linger on it for too long, but for those of you who are unfamiliar, I'm gonna give you the quick recap. Originally Thank published you. in 2007, One More Day was part of the aftermath of Civil War's storyline, where, just like it appeared in the movies, the team fights over whether superheroes should have to register themselves in order to protect the public. 
like. In the comics, heroes who initially supported Iron Man's pro-registration team had to publicly reveal their secret identities as part of the agreement. So Peter being on Team Stark is something that he almost immediately regrets. And that, my friends, is why you always have to read the fine print. And since every villain now knew how to find Spider-Man, Aunt May catches a bullet from a hitman, lapsing into a fatal coma brought on by her injuries. And, you know, probably being like a thousand years old at this point. After going to everyone he knows to try and fix it, including Doctor Strange, he gets hit up by someone who says that they can help Mephisto, aka the devil, who offers to infernal magic Aunt May back to life provided Peter allows him to erase the other thing Spider-Man loves the most, the entire history of his marriage to Mary Jane Watson. Something oh, which, sad. wouldn't you know it, Marvel's editors at the time had also been trying unsuccessfully to erase for over a decade. Spider-Man says yes, and he and Mary Jane are allowed to be together for one more day. That's the name of the movie. And then Peter wakes up in a rebooted world. Oh, and also his web shooters aren't organic anymore, which was a thing for a while. And yeah, this story is one of the reasons why so many people are always looking for Mephisto to show up. But this time, with No Way Home? Well, yeah, the Mephisto theories really seem to fit. The broad strokes of the story work. Peter wants the world to forget his identity. He makes a deal with a magic user. Chaos ensues. Then, of course, you have the smaller details, like the guy holding up the Devil Horns caricature of Peter Parker in the protest scene Dang, with the text that reads intense. Devil in Disguise. I mean, that's not even trying to hide it. At this point, I think that Marvel knows that every trailer they release needs a Mephisto Easter egg. And not only that, but this theory would also explain all the weird stuff happening with Doctor Strange in the trailer. You see, in Episode 4 of Marvel's What If, we're introduced to an alternate version of Doctor Strange Ooh, that's nicknamed cool. Armani. Go this way. Sorcerer Armani. And labeled in the subtitles as Strange Supreme. In this episode, he attempts to use the Time Stone to save his love Christine, who, in this timeline, died in the accident that broke Strange's hands from the original MCU. We're told that the moment of her death is called an absolute point, something that cannot be changed because doing so would create a paradox. Her death is an mm. absolute point in time. So it's that type of thing where you just have to let it happen. That's unfortunate. I haven't seen the what if either. Oh my goodness. Get it together, Serena. Get it together. Time. Absolute. Unchangeable. If you erase her death, you never start your journey. You cannot reverse an absolute point. Strange, being the stubborn guy he is, decides that all he needs is to become more powerful. And so he summons a slew of creatures in order to absorb their magic. I need to borrow your powers. Do you mind sharing a tentacle or two? I don't think His this transformation ends, but... at this point is uh fairly demonic. Some would even go so far as to call him the devil. Eventually, he becomes powerful enough to shatter the absolute point. Except uh, there's one problem: like breaking a load-bearing beam in a house, demolishing that moment in time causes the universe to collapse around him. As Strange Supreme struggles to keep the universe intact, the very fabric of reality crushes him into a small purple gem. Now, I bet you're thinking, so what, Matt Pat? This sounds like a complete story. Alternate universe Doctor Strange destroys his own universe out of arrogance, story closed, right? Well, maybe not right, theorists. For one, we hear this line at the end of the Spider-Man trailer. Be careful what you wish for, Parker. It's a warning that would believably come from a Doctor Strange who just oh. wished to have his love back and sacrificed his soul and entire universe to get it, only for that to backfire horribly. Also, notice how No Way Home's Doctor Strange still wears the Eye of Agamotto, something that, oh, I don't know, Thanos destroyed back in Infinity War? Hmm. Now, who has an intact version of that charm? Strange Supreme in What If. And the similarities just keep going. Wong, in the What If episode, gives a warning that Strange immediately ignores, pretty much paralleling the exact same scene in the Spider-Man trailer. Well, I'm going to start the kettle. I suggest you join me before you do something reckless. Strange. Don't cast that spell. It's too dangerous. And at the end of What If, Strange mm. Supreme cries mm. out to Uatu the Watcher to do something, showing that this version of Strange is powerful enough to see and talk to an interdimensional being. But Uatu claims that he can't help the guy because doing so would endanger all other universes. I could warn him, intervene. But the fate of his universe is not worth risking the safety of all others. This proves that if Armani escaped his purple gem prison, he would have the knowledge and ability and motive to tamper with the very fabric of reality, exactly what Strange is doing in the No Way Home trailer. And all of this, all of it is without even going into how having a demonic Doctor Strange fill the role of Mephisto would help introduce the character while also circumventing China's heavy censorship around the devil and occult, something that we talked extensively about in a previous WandaVision oh, episode. Linked right, Mia. 
So this has got to be it, right? The devil himself, Mephisto, finally steps out from the MCU shadows, set up in an alternate timeline presented in What If to sow chaos, launch Spider-Man into a multiversal war against his greatest enemies, and, um, and, uh, what exactly? You see, that's the problem with the whole strange isn't himself theory train that I've been seeing going around. It's too complicated. Spider-Man is too mainstream of a character and too important of a franchise to get bogged down with things having to be set up in a Disney Plus series. The offshoot franchises have to be in service of the movies, not vice versa. We can't set up a multiverse okay. and multiple enemies and multiple Spider-Man and also Doctor Strange actually being the devil all in this one movie. It is just way too much. Plus, you don't even have to go that far. There's a better fit for this story found in the comics. One that doesn't require Mephisto and one that, quite honestly, more closely follows what we see happening in the trailer. I don't know why no one's brought this one up in public discourse yet, but the clear parallel to the story in No Way Home isn't one more day, it's the story's follow-up, the lesser known one moment in time. Now, people don't tend to know this one because one more day was so unpopular that a lot of fans refused to acknowledge anything that came after it in the timeline. But stop me for a minute if any of these plot points sound familiar. After Peter Parker's identity gets out, his family and loved ones are suddenly put into danger and he goes not to Mephisto, but rather to Doctor Strange for help, asking Strange to erase the world's memories of his identity as Spider-Man. To quote from the comic, Ooh. I blew it strange. I put my family in the crosshairs. I need the world to forget that I'm Spider-Man. Strange then disappears to think it through, just like in these shots from the trailer. After consulting with Mr. Fantastic and Iron Man, Doctor Strange agrees. He creates a protective bubble for Peter to be shielded from the spell and starts his magic. And oh wait, oh. wouldn't you know it, Peter starts having second thoughts, regrets his decision, and decides to pull Mary Jane into the protective bubble so she doesn't lose her memories, which in turn causes chaos. So to recap, we've got oh, ourselves goodness. Peter asking Doctor Doctor Strange to do a memory scrub, and then changing his mind mid-abracadabra because he's torn about losing his loved ones. Sounds Come like we on. might have found ourselves the real source of this story. Just make a choice. Everything will be fine. Just make a choice. Stick with it. Don't change it. All he had to do was just stick with the plan. That's all he had to do. Jeez. In the end, Mary Jane is like, you should have let me forget too, and TLDR, the lesson is that Peter needed to grow up and not rely on magic to solve his problems. To quote from the story, I should have listened to Doc Strange when he told me there were a lot of things he could do with his magic, but I didn't, and he was right. In the end, I just needed to grow up and face the inevitable, which to me sounds exactly like the moral of a Spider-Man growing up and becoming an adult story like we have with Tom Holland in No Way Home. And to get there, you know, he just needs to hop between a few different universes to talk to older, wiser spider man who've been in his shoes before. But wait, there's one final universe that we've neglected to mention in this entire theory, and that's ours. And this is where the reboot stuff comes in. You see, the world seems to have forgotten that Disney and Sony still have an awkward step-parent relationship with Spider-Man. Sure, Disney may have convinced Sony to give him streaming rights to Spider-Man through 2026, but what about the other deal? The one where Sony still owns the movie rights to all of Spider-Man, but they co-produce the main ones with Marvel Studios so they can be in the MCU. As far as anyone saying publicly, that's apparently still set to expire when Tom Holland's current contract for this solo movie, as well as one more yet unknown Marvel appearance, are concluded. Which means one thing, it's quickly becoming renegotiation time. And that means there's always a chance that Sony decides to take its web-covered ball and go home. Which brings us to our other theory today. Whatever happens in Spider-Man No Way Home, whichever other villains show up, whichever other Spider-Man appear, by whatever means Wanda Maximoff zaps in during the post credit scene to set us up for the multi of madness, the story is going to wrap up in such a way that, while there can be a path forward for Tom Holland's Peter Parker, he can also be soft rebooted as a different Peter Parker, <laughs> or heck, a different Spider-Man like Miles Morales, if and when things between Disney and Sony don't go well. I mean, you think it's just a coincidence they chose to go all in on a premise that's based on two comic storylines that literally were created to reboot the character? Consider this, Peter says that he wants the world to forget that Mysterio revealed his identity, but immediately interrupts the spell to to preserve certain memories for certain people. It's clear that what he really wants is the opposite of that famous Uncle Ben line, to have the power of being Spider-Man without the responsibility that comes with it. He oh wants boy. to be Spider-Man, but also wants personal connections that aren't put at risk, just like Peter did in One Moment in Time, and hmm. also in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2, and also again in Amazing Spider-Man 2. Tom Holland in this movie is gonna have to learn that you can't have it both ways. He's gonna have to make a 
choice. Problem. Make a choice. Trying to live two different Stick lives. with it. The longer you do it, the more dangerous it becomes. He'll have to give up one part or the other of his double life. And the thing about that is, basically any decision he makes in that scenario in any direction completely upends the Spider-Man status quo. Staying as Spider-Man and memory wiping everyone, well, that turns every character relationship into a clean slate. Moving forward as Spider-Man without a memory wipe, he's gonna have to distance himself from his loved ones because they're now in danger. Yeah. Giving up the mask entirely to someone else so he can live a normal life with his loved ones? Yeah, that's big reboot time. I'm sure you all can think of more than that, but what all those scenarios have in common is that they're open-ended and reboot ready. If Sony or Disney start having second thoughts about the joint custody agreement. The bottom line is this, in order for this story to conclude in a satisfying, impactful, definitive way that also leaves the franchise able to proceed, Spider-Man himself is gonna be the one who can't go back to the way things were, whose only choices will be to go forward into a radically changed world. In the end, it's Peter who'll truly have no way home. But Dang. hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And cut. <laughs> Wow. Alright, well that concludes our reaction. Thanks for watching. I've got something I don't need to hide. Struck by